Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Command Value Podcast. I'm your host Landon today, and I'm going to be bringing you a deck tech. Before I get into today's deck tech, if you're looking for a quick way of supporting the channel, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future deck techs or any of our future gameplay episodes. We will be posting a deck tech episode every Monday, so make sure you don't miss that, and it's a great way to support us, and we really appreciate it. Today, I am building a commander from the recently released Theros Beyond Death set. Um, it's a white green commander named Siona, Captain of the Peleus. She costs one a green and white. She's a legendary creature human soldier, and she has some abilities on her. The first one is when Siona enters the battlefield, you can look at the top seven cards of your library and you reveal an aura from among them and you put it into your hand. And then the rest of the cards go on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then the second line of text says, whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, you get to create a one, one white human soldier token. So the route that I've chosen to go with Siona is Enchantress slash Auras. So the deck is going to be running a lot of auras from auras that enchant lands to auras that enchant creatures to enchantments that can uh, negatively impact our opponents to um, enchantments that also synergize with other enchantments. So there's just a lot of enchantment shenanigans going on here. The goal of this deck, like I said, is to play a whole bunch of enchantments and we actually have an infinite combo that will more than likely win us the game, but a backup plan is just to make some creatures really strong and go kind of wide. So getting into the list, I'd like to start with just the, the ramp package and we've got a mix of, of creatures, non-creatures and enchantments. We're playing Elvish Mystic, Lanoir Elves, and Avacyn's Pilgrim, each of which are just a one mana dork that can produce a color in our, in our color identity. We then have Voyaging Satyr and Arbor Elf, which become really good mana dorks in that they untap a land. And since we're running a whole bunch of enchantments that can make our lands tap for more mana, Voyaging Satyr and Arbor Elf can give us a ton of mana in the late game. And then we're running Secure Tribe Elder because that's just a, a really good ramp card in green. For our non-creature ramp, we're running Cultivate, Kadama's Reach, and Selesnya Signet. Just each of these give us some more lands than we had before. And then we're running a bunch of auras, which synergize really well with our commander and some other cards in the deck. We're running Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth, Overgrowth, Fertile Ground, Weirding Wood, New Horizons, Gift of Paradise, and Verdant Haven. Each of these have a way of enchanting land, making that land tap for more mana than it could otherwise, and they also have some other values staple onto them, but we're really just looking for the ramp. In addition to putting lands into play, we also are running some cards that will make our auras costs less with some reduction abilities. Danitha Capuchin, Paragon, Herald of the Pantheon, Hero of Aroas, and Starfield Mystic, each of which will make our auras or enchantments cost one less to cast, and they all have some type of other value stapled onto them, but we're just focusing on the reduction. So once we've ramped and hopefully gotten our commander out, the next thing that we're gonna try and do is get our draw engines going. This deck is running 10 cards that are going to let us draw a card every time we cast an enchantment in one way or another. We've got Mesa Enchantress, Seder Enchanter, Verdurn Enchantress, Argothian Enchantress, Satessin Enchampion, Idolin of Blossoms, Enchantress's Presence, Core Spirit Dancer, and Sram Chief Edificer, all of which basically do the same thing, that whenever we cast an enchantment or enters a battlefield, it's gonna let us draw a card. And Season of Growth is also going to let us draw a card whenever a spell that we cast targets a creature you control, which whenever we cast an aura and target a creature, it's, it's basically gonna let us draw a card. So with 10 card draw engines essentially in our deck, what are, we, what are we looking for? We're looking for either tutors to find our combo or we're looking for our combo directly. The tutors that we're running are Idyllic Tutor, which for two and a white, we can search our library for an enchantment and put it, put it into our hand. And thankfully this card was just reprinted, so it's no longer $30 which makes it a lot more affordable. We're then running Heliod's Pilgrim, which essentially does the same thing. We can search our library for an enchantment, reveal it, put it into our hand. We're then running Plea for Guidance, which is a little bit more costly, but it lets us search our library for two enchantments, reveal them and put them into our hand. Open the Armory lets us for one and a white search our library for any enchantment and put it into our hand. The next tutor that we're running is actually a creature that costs five and a white. It's Aether Touched Mage. When Aether Touched Mage enters a battlefield, we can search our library for an aura that could enchant it. If Aether Touched Mage is still on the battlefield, put that aura card onto the battlefield attached to it. Otherwise, reveal a card and put it into our hand and we shuffle our library. So even if our opponents kill it when it comes into play, we still get the aura into our hand. Otherwise, we can enchant it. And that has a lot of synergy with our combo piece and our commander, which we'll go over in a little bit. Next up, we're running Three Dreams, which is a bomb of a tutor in our deck. 
Three dreams for four and a white. It's a sorcery. We can search our library for up to three aura cards with different names, reveal them and put them into our hand and shuffle our library. So for five mana, we can get three auras. That card is like crazy powerful in our deck. Next, we're running Expedition Map, which is an artifact which finds a land. Uh, the land that we want to find with it is a card called Emergent Zone. And again, that is part of our combo and I will talk about that in a little bit. Next, let's go over the auras in our deck that can help make our creatures stronger. We're playing Bear Umbra, which not only gives our creature totem armor as protection from it dying, it also has the added benefit of being able to untap all of our lands when the creature attacks. Next, I'm playing Sigil of the Nyan Gods. It's an aura for one, a green, and a white. The enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control, and it also has cycling for a hybrid Selesnya, so either a green or a white, discard it, and draw a card. Again, this card is very powerful with our commander out because for every enchantment that we cast, we also get a soldier token. So every time we cast an enchantment, essentially the creature that Sigil of the Nine Gods is on is going to get bigger. Next, we're playing another card with totem armor called Felidar Umbra. For one and a white, the enchanted creature gets lifelink, and if the creature were to die, instead you just destroy the Felidar Umbra and your creature stays alive. And for one and a white, it has an activated ability that lets you attach Felidar Umbra to a creature you control. So you can kind of switch the, the protection ability off to another creature if something is about to die and you don't want it, but you've already put Felidar Umbra on a different creature, you can swap it over and save it. Next up, we're playing Sage's Reverie, which is another way that our deck has of drawing a whole bunch of cards. For three and a white, the enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each aura we control that's attached to a creature, and when it enters a battlefield, we draw a card for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. So if we've got, you know, six or seven auras attached to our creatures, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards. Next up to add to the totem armor cards, we're playing Snake Umbra. The enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature deals combat damage to an opponent, we can draw a card with totem armor. So that's just another way for our deck to draw cards. You're going to see that there's card. this deck is very efficient and will draw a lot of cards. And the more cards you draw, the more likely you are to draw the combo piece. Next up, we're playing an older card called Alpha Status. For two and a green, the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two for each other creature in play that shares a creature type with it. That is awesome with our commander because she happens to make soldiers that share creature types with each other. So if you've got six or seven soldiers on the battlefield, Alpha Status is going to make the enchanted soldier very, very, very big and a lot of times can just one shot your opponent. Next up, I'm playing kind of a pet card of mine. I just really like the art on this card, so I put it in the deck. It's all that glitters, uh, one in a white, the enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. And at this point, I'd like to just kind of pause and, and mention that a lot of the auras that I'm playing are just for my meta or auras that I think are good, but you're more than welcome to swap out any of these auras for maybe a really cool aura that you opened up in a pack or maybe an aura that you've had in your collection for a while. Um, it really doesn't make a huge difference at the end of the day what auras you're playing because there's so much synergy in the deck. It's really just all up to what you like, but these are the ones that I've chosen. Next up, I'm playing Canopy Cover, which is one under green and the enchanted creature can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach and enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. So it makes one of your creatures really difficult for your opponents to deal with because it can't be the target of spells and it's really hard to block. Next up, I'm playing Rancor, which is a one green enchantment that gives the enchanted creature plus two, plus O, oh, and trample. And when Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can return it to your hand, which is awesome because giving your creature a lot of power and toughness does absolutely nothing unless it has trample. So Rancor is really good in this deck. Next up, I'm playing Ethereal Armor, which is probably one of the most efficient, powerful auras in this deck. It costs just one white mana, and the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control, and it has first strike. That is a ton of value for just one white mana, and you'd always be happy to draw it. And finally, the last aura buff that we're playing in this deck is Armadillo Cloak. For one, a green and a white, the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has trample. And whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. So it's pseudo lifelink, which is very important in this deck because you're going to have a really big creature that's going to be gaining you a lot of life. Now, I'm sure you're dying to hear this mysterious combo that I've alluded to like five or six times during this video, but it's honestly a really simple one and you've probably already heard about it. There's a aura enchantment called Shielded by Faith. What does Shielded by Faith do? Well, for one white white, the enchanted creature gets indestructible, but that's not all. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach Shielded by Faith to that creature. Well, if we have our commander out, 
and we cast Shielded by Faith, targeting our commander. What's going to happen is it's going to enter the battlefield and attach our, to our commander, and Siona is going to trigger and make a soldier. When that soldier enters the battlefield, Shielded by Faith is going to see that creature and ask if you want to attach it to it. You're going to say yes and move Shielded by Faith to that soldier, which will then trigger Siona because an aura got attached to a creature and she will make another token. At that point, you've made a loop and you can do this infinite times and make infinite soldier tokens. Obviously doing this on your turn and making infinite soldiers without giving them a way of attacking immediately does not win you the game and your opponents will have a full turn cycle to deal with it. That's why I've included expedition map and a lot of drop engines to find emergent zone, which we can sacrifice emergent zone and we can play at instant speed. So the line of play is we wait until the opponent that's going right before us, we sacrifice the emergent zone, give shielded by faith flash, combo off right there, make infinite soldiers, and then all we have to do is untap and swing in for the win. And even without this combo, the deck is still very strong, and if for some reason this gets shut down, you still have a bunch of massive creatures being enchanted by really powerful spells, and you're drawing a lot of cards and you're going to be able to find answers anyway. So the combo is just a way of closing out games quick or just ha providing a really powerful threat, but it's not completely vital to the deck. In fact, if you play in a meta that doesn't like combos, or you just don't like combos, you don't have to include that card. You could just put a different enchantment in there and the deck will still run really, really, really well. Next up, let's go over the ways the deck has of interacting with our opponents and keeping them from progressing their board state. We have Kenrith's Transformation, which for one in a green enters a battlefield and can enchant any creature. And that creature is a 3-3 elk and it loses all abilities and it lets us draw a card. So effectively, we can just enchant our opponent's commander or a really troublesome creature and just completely nerf it. We're then playing Song of the Dryads, which for two and a green, we can enchant any permanent, and that permanent is a forest. Um, this can really hose one of our opponent's commanders. We turn them into a forest. They can't block with it. They can't do anything with it. Um, it can't go back to their command zone. It can really mess them up. Dark Steam Mutation is very similar. We can enchant any creature, and that creature is a bug with Indestructible, which is also very useless for blocking. Or it's, it's good for blocking, but our opponents can't block with it, let it die, and let it go back to their command zone. Next, running Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile, each of which are just very cheap uh, removal spells. And we're playing Winds of Wrath as our board wipe. It destroys all creatures that aren't enchanted, and they can't be regenerated. So many times this is just gonna be a one-sided board wipe. It might as well be a Cyclonic Rift. It's going to blow up all of our opponent's creatures because most people don't play auras, and it's going to leave your creatures unscathed. The last category that I made for this deck is Recursion and Protection. Obviously our opponents aren't just gonna let us sit there and beat them up. They're gonna try and stop our strategy and destroy our auras. Luckily we have ways of protecting our creatures and getting our auras back. Nomad Mythmaker for two and a white is a human nomad cleric and he has an activated ability that says pay a white and tap him and you can put target aura card in a graveyard into play attached to a creature you control. So if your opponents have destroyed your shielded by faith or any of your other favorite enchantments, this guy is going to not only bring them back to the battlefield but attach to a creature. Next up, we're playing Oromancer. For two and a white, we get a human wizard that has an enter the battlefield trigger that lets us return an enchantment card from our graveyard to our hand. Just a great recursion spell. Next up, we're playing Eternal Witness, which is very similar to Oromancer in our deck. It's one green green, and when it enters a battlefield, we can return any card from our graveyard to our hand. Most of the time, we're going to be targeting a removal spell or an aura that was destroyed. We're then playing Open the Vaults, which is a bomb in our deck. For four white white, we return everybody returns all artifacts and enchantments from their graveyard to the battlefield. Most of the time, this is going to benefit us more than all of our opponents. And a lot of times this can be a game ending play. And the last one in this category is Unbreakable Formation. For two and a white, creatures that we control gain indestructible until end of turn. And if we cast a spell during our main phase, uh, we also get to put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until end of turn. But most of the time we wanna hold this up in response to a board wipe to protect our board. And congratulations, you made it to the end of the Siona deck. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like the deck. Um, if you do build it and you play it, let me know how it plays or if there's any cards that maybe you would be playing that I'm not playing or cards that you've taken out because maybe they didn't work super well. In any case, I'd really like to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.